Hi, welcome to the Knitter's Notebook podcast, page eight. I am Hexan. You can find me on Instagram as Hexan Evers and on Ravelry as Hexan Knits. I do know my usernames. This is a knitting podcast, um, primarily on knitting design. And it is Tuesday, April 30th. That is the date. Um, so let's get started. I have a few things, a lot of stuff. It's just a pile next to me uh, to talk about. But first, I want to talk about what I'm wearing right now, partly because I realize I haven't showed this since I finished it a long time ago. And also because it's a little bit hot up here, so I want to take it off. But this is my chunky cardigan um, that took a while to knit up. Yeah. So I bought this yarn. The yarn is I Love This Yarn, in, uh, which is a 100% acrylic worsted weight yarn um, in the brown tweed colorway. And it's, I held it double, and I bought it for the original purpose of knitting a turtle dove by Espace Trico, that turtle dove sweater pattern. Long story short, I did not follow the pattern and messed it up and had to rip it all out. So I cast on and made a cardigan, and it's rather long. It's, it's, I'm sitting in a rather awkward spot, so I'm not going to say that, but it's... It's really nice, and it just has these long sleeves that there's no shaping to them. They're just tubes, and then it's these decreases for a cuff. And it's really nice, and it's got a uh, one-by-one rib with the trims. Yeah, I did do that. That was a different sweater. Never mind. Thought ran away. Um, that's all there is to it, and now I'm going to take it off because it's hot up here. Okay. I have, first, before we get into finished, that was, mm, I can speak, that sweater was finished a long time ago, that's just a cardigan pattern that I, I just, I got the numbers for myself and just knit it, and it was done. It was knit on a US size 11, which I don't know the metric size for. Um, that was not finished a long time ago, and before we talk about my recently finished objects, I want to talk about a pattern release I just had. I just released yesterday um, my Voxel Socks pattern, and these aren't the, the ones that are featured in the pattern, uh, these are just, I've been pairing it up, I've showed before. These are the Voxel Socks and the Stitch pattern, if I get close enough, it's a rib-based sock, so it's very stretchy. Um, and it, it fits really well, but it's not, it's not just ribbing. Like, I don't know if anyone else is like this. I struggle so hard with ribbing. I always cop out, usually around 12 rounds, and say I'm done, it's long enough, and then I regret it because I wanted it longer. Um, and I love rib-based socks, I just hate knitting them. So this pattern, it is mostly knit to, by knit to, purl to. But it's just, every now and then there's a break round and just something a little bit different. And you can see also it's got this twist, twisted, you know, that fake cable on both sides. I won't flip it around because it's blowing out so bad. I thought sitting in front of a plain white wall would work, apparently not. And it's also got these guarded details on, me, on it. Um... And the pattern will com comes with instructions for a slip stitch heel flap and gusset. And this is just a regular toe. The pattern comes with uh, instructions for a star toe. And that's all shown in the pictures. The sock featured in the pattern, I can speak. That should be my title for everything. I can speak. I promise. And it's up on Ravelry, and this is my fourth sock pattern, and it's, it's quite an accomplishment, I think. Um, so when yesterday, when I released the pattern, um, I had a a you know twenty four hour sale, a discount on it. it. You could get it for one dollar. That has since ended, 
but uh, very soon I'm going to have a, a discount on all my patterns um, during the month of May. That'll be announced on my Instagram. I'm going to have a discount for everything because oh, I just snapped that. Sorry. I'm going to... This is going horribly. There'll be so much editing. <laughs> I'm going to have a discount for all my patterns, um, a discount code because it's May and that's my birthday month. So I thought that would be fun and it's, it's good. So that's the box of socks. I will stop flashing them around because I'm going to hit the camera in a minute. Okay. Now for finished objects. While we're still talking about designs, I guess we'll start with the biggest finished object, which I'm so happy with. I just, I just love it. My crossroad shawl, my second one, the one with the good, where I wrote up the pattern and everything, and it's not going to fit all in the frame. But this is the crossroad shawl. And it's, if, uh, how do, where do I start? I just love this. I do love it. Though you wouldn't be able to tell when I, you know, when you reach about here, and this is my second one, I'm just like, okay, am I done increasing? Am I done increasing? I mean, two of them. It happens. Um, so the crossword shawl, it starts here, and you've got this, it's increased along one edge, and you're doing this beautiful cable that is so easy. And you're also doing an I cord edge on another, on the other side. And you increase to its widest point. Hopefully this is showing up. And then you decrease back down. And you're also doing this wonderful texture. And I love it. So this one was knit out of, out of this yarn in the Rosy Cheeks colorway. And it's a worsted weight, the pants are for worsted weight, but it's a shawl, you can really play around with it and just, you know, make it as wide as you want and then decrease back down. So like I said, this is my, I'm going to reach over here, my second one, because here was the first one. I want you to be able to see that beautiful border, look at that, look at that point, it's so gorgeous. So the pattern, like I said, is written up. Um, and I'll be putting out a call for testers soon. Um, if that would, mm, how I do my testing, I put up a thread on Ravelry, um, and I say, announce it on my Instagram. So if anyone is interested on, in testing this, uh, you can follow me on Instagram as Hexanovers, and I will, there will be more information about that. See words. I can do that. Oh, this marker is just here when I was writing up the pattern to mark when I reached my center when I was about to get decreasing. So yeah. So there's just a lot of little finishing things to do on this, and also I do have endeavors too. I don't know if this is actually going to happen to do a tutorial on how to do the cable. Because I think the cable is the most complicated part. It's really basic, everything else. The cable is the most complicated part, and it's really easy once you realize it. It's so easy. I could just sit here all day and talk about how easy this cable is. And it's so pretty. It's just so pretty. <sighs> but I hope to do a tutorial for that cable. And that's that. So nice, so nice. And now into whips. Uh, I'm working on another design, uh, the other shawl that I mentioned, and I'm gonna reach again. Ew, my needle's just gonna go to the floor. I'm sorry. This shawl, which doesn't have a name yet, but it's wonderful. With this beautiful, this crescent shaped shawl with this beautiful texture. And hopefully you can see a pretty pico bindle. I'm needing another one of this to fix the things I've made a mistake on. And I just finished, 
it's it's not much to see. It's the same yarn as this, which is um, yarn B, must be merino, which is a 50% merino wool, 25% acrylic, 25% nylon, and it's so nice. Uh, it's DK weight. I'm knitting this on. I think a five. I'm gonna guess a five. I could be wrong. No, it's a five. Three point seven five millimeter. So it's at the same point as this is, and my needles are clinking, and that's gonna sh show up, sound up, so loud. I'm sorry. This part here is all done, and I have to wait to get more yarn for it. So there's not much to see. Is actually the label, the yarn. And it's living in this just little bag that I have no idea where it came from. But it's very nice and small, but of course it's gonna get bigger. So I need to pull out another bag for it when I finally get more yarn for it. Okay. That's the design stuff. Oh, I have more finished objects. Duh. I don't say duh. Why did I do that? Uh, you saw these as a work in progress last time. The Align Mitts. And I still don't know who they are by, because I did not look that up. But Very Pink Knits is a tutorial on them, and it's a free pattern. You can find it. The Align, I want to say it's Align Mitts. I think it is. It might be something else. But I always say it in my head as Align Mitts. A line. A line. I'm going to stop talking. The Align Mitts. Um, I knit these on a US 2.75, which is a US size 2, which I think is a size down from what the pattern calls for because I didn't check gauge. I just like how sock yarn knits up at that gauge. And this is Knit Pick Stroll, hand, paint, hand painted stroll, in the. I don't remember. Sunny afternoon. Someone just cut me off. That's fine. So that's all there is to say about these. They're done. They're nice. I should knit more of these because I really like them, but I don't like knitting gloves. I don't know what it is. I just hate knitting gloves. But these are really quick, so I suffered through. Yay me. And the last finished object I have is this hat. Which I knit this actually on Easter. As a quick something to knit plain. Um, you might recognize the yarn. It is the, let me get this right, Loops and Thread, Jordy K. And I, the, I think it's pink. It's just pink or purple stripes colorway. It's a self sharpening yarn. And I had a bunch of little balls of it just from when I was knitting my sweater. Um, and constantly trying to get to the right stripe sequence because the, the, the yarn balls weren't identical. So, so the stripes aren't, they kind of change up if you look at it too much. But it's okay. And it's nice. I did like 24 rounds of the ribbing good for me. Um, and then I just used up all the yarn in the little balls I had left. And I think I just, no, I did do good decreases, I think. Well, not did good decreases, I didn't space them right. But that's okay. And it's really nice. And I knit this on a five. Yes, it was a five because I used the same needles for my shawl. I remember things. So, that's this hat, and that's one of my finished objects, but this hat sent me to, I wanted to knit hats. And I was all prepared to knit all these plain vanilla beanies because it was so much fun to knit. Then I went through, like I have a stack of finished stuff that is all prepared to, you know, it's, it's I can't use it, or I know someone that can use it. It's just tossed aside as a gift for later. And I have a lot of hats. I don't know why I have, I for so long I didn't want to knit hats. And now I'm in the mood to knit hats and I realize I don't need them. And part of me goes, well, you will eventually. And the other part of me goes, but you won't now. I don't know. Whatever. 
but speaking of hats, that's also one of my new works in progress. This is a, the same bag as the shawl is in, just in blue. And this is actually using the leftovers from my shawl, the this one. This hat. So clearly I didn't win in the I don't need another hat, but I did win in that I wanted to do a texture. No, what? I don't make sense. Let's just accept it. So I had a lot of, not a lot, but more than I thought of the blue. And a lot, like a big ball of the ivory, which I remember because the reason this first section was so long in the shell is because I wanted to make sure this color showed. And I realized it went over, mm, that's not making sense. I don't know anymore. I had a lot left over. <laughs> Let's just sum it up. And so I'm knitting a blueberry waffle bean. Is it violet waffle or blueberry waffle? I don't know. There are quite a few of them on Ravelry. I just did the stitch pattern. And it's pretty far. I could probably start decreasing. I have... This might seem like a bit decreasing. I'm so bad at judging yardage. Like, yeah, sure, this will kind of be decreasing, maybe. I might do my cheetos decreasing that you see in the Garter Red Bliss hat, which is one of my patterns. It's free on Ravelry, um, where I just do the knit two together, you know, do the plain round knit two together. I like that, that decrease. It, it works. So here it is, and it's so nice. I really do love the feel of it. This yarn and the stitch pattern is just so squishy. And I think I'm knitting this on a five. Yep, it's five. Three point seven five millimeter. So nice. Very nice indeed. And then uh, I have two more works in progress. I'll just show. I'm gonna reach again. <laughs> this is not really a work in progress. Um, we've had some really nice weather here. I was looking out the window, which is just distracting. Um, some nice weather here, so I went to the park and I needed something to knit while we went to the park, because, you know, because that's what you do, right? You knit when you go to the park, right? So I started a dishcloth. And these really old needles, which I'm not sure what size they are. Okay, so these, I think these are a nine. I could grab my needle gauge, but it's all the way over there. If these are the nines, then these are the needles that I used all day, every day, for so many years. Because I didn't have my interchangeable set yet, I had like a US size 6 on straights, but I hated them because I'm a flicker, thick my yarn, and one of your fingers showing you how I flick my yarn. So these are the needles I used all the time every single project because it's all I had. And you can actually okay so there's like chip paint on them but that's not from me that's from my sister who I taught to knit and she has the ability when she's using aluminum needles like this to scrape the paint off while she uses them. I don't know how or why she they just become very well used in her hands. And we got this, you know, lovely cord that is all crinkled up and whatever. So the only reason I grabbed these ones is because I needed, I knew I wasn't going to work on this, work on this, you know. I haven't, it's been sitting on my desk for days. Um, so I just grabbed these needles because I could use them and not worry about retrieving them later, not feel obligated to finish this dishcloth. So I did this in one trip to the park, it was like maybe an hour. That's not sitting there on straight knitting, that's you know wandering around the park not really paying attention to what you're doing knitting. Very different. The yarn is I Love This Cotton, 70% cotton, and the colorway is foreign. I want to say it's foreign stand, it's not. It's Autumn Harvest 
maybe. It's got like a 60% chance on that one. I'm pretty sure it's still up. I'm, I'm just giving up. Things are falling out of my hands today. That's sad. Um, and then my last work in progress, the last thing I have to talk about, because I did not touch my cross stitch. Toadette is still all pale in her head. Got no color. Maybe see Dr. Mario about that. I've not touched it. I'm looking over all my cross stitch stuff. I want to. My problem with cross stitch is that it, I feel like it takes so much preparing. And I mean, you could say the same about knitting. But, well, in some respects, I mean, you can't really just cast on the sweater. You kind of have to take time to gauge and, you know, figure out measurements and all that. But, like, I can just throw on a pair of socks and my heels. Done that. Throw on a hat. It's easy. That cross stitch, you gotta pick out your colors. You gotta cut the cloth so it's not so big that you're tripping over it. <sighs> just takes preparing. And even though it's right there, I'm just too lazy to prepare it. So I was only knitting today. Which is fine. I don't care about that. Um, and I'm knitting on a pair of socks. Which is in my bag here. With all my things on it. And I, so like I said, I was in, I really liked knitting that hat because it was all plain and it just flew off the needles and I felt all happy and in a mood for stockinette stitch. So I did what I always tell myself, don't do it. I cast it on a pair of vanilla socks, which sounds great. And it is great. It's good to cast on a pair of vanilla socks. Except they take forever. For me anyway. I mean, here they are. Now, you say it takes forever, it's like, I'm almost done. I am almost done. So I'm knitting, it's self-striping now, which makes it even go even faster, but. Here's the sock, and for some reason, why am I doing this? I'm doing an afterthought skill. Because I apparently don't listen to myself. So before I get on the after heel, after the thought heel story. The yarn I'm using is Red Heart Soul Mule Free, something along those lines. Um, it has no nylon in it, and I know these socks are gonna wear out. I need a pair of vanilla socks with them last time. Um, I know they're gonna, or at least I'll wear through them if I decide to keep them. Um, it's in the the self-striping, the farm stand colorway, I believe it's called. And the cuff is a different colorway of the same brand. So I'm just going around and around and around using up all this yarn. And then I'll either put in a white heel. Uh, I'm going to either put in a white toe and heel. Or I will see how much I have left of this yarn, which I used for the cuff. Okay, and a 2.75 millimeter needle, geo size 2, chow goose, red lace, 40 inch cord, which I got for the needles. The yarn, the yarn's good knitting around and around. It's, I shouldn't have said that about vanilla socks. Just usually I don't have, don't find the motivation to work on them. Every now and then I do again. Every now and again I do. Okay, so afterthought heels. I told myself I was going to do it again because last summer, I knit two pairs of socks, probably total, last summer was a bit of a whatever, uh, and I did tubes because I had a little bit of sock yarn, I didn't have any full skeins of sock yarn, so I knit some scrappy socks, just tubes, and then I saw how long I could go, how much I could get away with a cuff, and decided who to give them to and all that, and I picked up for an afterthought everything heel. Afterthought heel, not afterthought everything. Kirby Warby method, you know, you pick up, you measure, you pick up the stitches, and you pick up the stitches, there's a row in between, and you cut that row, you unravel, and it should be okay, right? It wasn't okay. It's not okay. I picked up one end, I picked up the other end, looked at the sock I had already picked up for, realized I didn't do it right on the other sock, tried to fix it, Thought I was okay. Turns out it was I wasn't okay. I had picked up one 
like so here's like the the row that you're supposed to leave the row in between the needles that you're supposed to unravel from so I was good 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 picking up picking up and then somehow I picked up a row above that so it's all scattered and then when I tried to unravel oops it's too far gone the whole sock and I I I probably could have fixed it I probably could have salvaged it but I didn't and I fixed my regrets some reason I'm gonna do it again because it should be fun should be doesn't mean it will be the only really real reason I'm doing an afterthought heel is because about trying to get as long a pair of socks as I can out of this yarn out of the leftovers I think I think each ball was 20 grams maybe a little bit less so I don't want to I don't want to do a short cuff, do a, you know, short row heel, and then do a foot and realize I had so much left over. And I didn't want to do toe up either, because toe up and knee, we've, we've had a falling out. Just, it, it wasn't it, it was me. I need to move on. I used to need a lot of toe up socks. But, I like cuff down. Even though I can never rely on it and to make my cuff long enough. Something we're working to through, towards through whatever. And that is everything. Yes, that is everything. I'm actually going over through everything in my head to see if that really is everything. But it is. Thank you for watching. Oh. Sorry. Thank you for watching and happy knitting.